I'm sharing today about um, some Torah personalities, some Kabbalah. And um, I'm starting with Rachel and Leah. So we know that Rachel is, Rachel and Leah are two sisters, Lavan's two daughters. Um, he had two other daughters with his maidservants that they called them Bill and Zilpah. And they, all four of them married uh, the, the son of Isaac and Rivka named Yaakov. Some say that Leah was destined for for Asaph, the brother. They were twins, um, Isaac Isaac and Rivka's child, children, Yaakov and Asaph. Anyway, so Rachel and Leah, the older's name, Hagdola versus Yeshana. Um, Yeshana. So the older was, was Leah, and she was great in her gifts, receiving the priesthood. She had the son Levi and the royalty for all time, Judah. And um, the name of the younger, Ketana, Betsayira, um, versus Sayira, um, was Rachel. So we call them like big versus older and little versus younger. Um, small in her gifts, she had Yosef who um, received the, he was like a leader, he received the birthright. Um, he got a double portion. Um, but for a time, um, like uh, his brother Benjamin, they had two kings, him, Sha sorry, Shaul, um, and his, for a time, neither founded a dynasty, and his um, son, Ishboshes. In Genesis, Bereshis 29, 16, it says, Leah had weak eyes, Rachel was shapely and beautiful. Yaakov loved Rachel, so he answered, I'll serve you for seven years for your daughter, to Lavan. Lavan said, better to you that I should give you, give her to a, you than to an outsider, stay with us. So Yaakov stayed for seven years, and he seemed to him but a few days because of his love for her. And we know that um, Yaakov's father, Isaac, and Yaakov's mother, Rivka, Isaac pleaded for Rivka because she was barren. The Lord answered and his wife conceived, but the children struggled in her womb. And she said, if so, why do I exist? And inquired of the Lord who answered, two nations are in your womb. Two separate people shall issue forth from your body. One people will be mightier than the other. The older shall serve the younger. So here we have this idea of older and younger a couple times. And then I want to share, um, there's a lady, she goes by Rabbi, her name is Yael. And she's from this uh, organization called Away In. And she says, we have to do acts of justice and speak words of blessing. We have to give thanks and notice the beauty and ask for help. We have to seek guidance and engage with ritual. And we have to listen well. And um, we know that, um, you know, I learned a lot of Kabbalah from the Kabbalah Center of Manhattan. And they share how um, we, we took a vow before we were born that we would be righteous and not wicked. And it says, Umahi Hashua Shemashbian Ito Tihi Sadik with Velo Tihi Rasha. What's the oath they made him swear? It is this that we vow to be like the light of the Creator. And we know that Yun and He and Vav and He is um, related to God's name. Sorry, is the is the name that we cannot pronounce related to some of the um, certain attributes? For example, we say it's closer to mercy. Anyway, it's uh, Chachma is the Yud. Chachma is the wisdom. Bina, the left side of the head. So Chachma is the right side. Like the father. Bina, like the mother. Like the source of understanding. And then we have Zeramp and the Vav is like the spine. It's like all the emotions. Then we have the, the He, with, which is has inside of Adonai. That's Malcha, like the feet. This is the kingship, queenship. Then we have, uh, later on, we have... Um, oh, and one other thing from the Kabbalah Center that uh, the bitterness of the fruit during, during the initial stages of growth isn't to be judged as a fault or blemish. We know it's because the fruit is not finished, evolving, ripening. And the same is true with everything else that seems to be evil or bad. It's just on the way. We're just judging by appeal. We're judging by a lack of ripeness. We're judging by something not finished. So then we know that um, later on in the tribe of Levi, who I mentioned, the priesthood, we have Aaron on the day that they did the inauguration, Aaron, the holy priest, the high priest, his two sons, um, what it says in, in Leviticus 10, 1, says, now Aaron's sons each took his fire pan, put fire in it, and laid incense on it, and offered before the Lord alien fire or foreign fire, which he had not enjoined upon them, and fire came forth from the Lord and consumed them, thus they died in an instant. And I heard that it's not because they were sinning. It was because it was so precious to God that God took it. However, um, at the same time, we know that um, 
there are many explanations. One says it's because they gaze too much at the Shechina. Um, another says it's because um, um, they were drinking or some say even some other kind of material. It could have been um, some type of foreign fire. could have been the, the part of the Ketoros. They added like uh, incense, you would say like a weed, like marijuana. Who knows? Could be not that. Could be something else. We don't know what. Then we have Rabbi uh, Dr. Shai Held, who says that Yehudi, Yehud, from Leah, is courage and achievement. This is gratitude even during heartbreak. And in terms of Isaac and Esav, we know from Aviva Zornberg that in the Zohar it says everyone loves his own kind. This Isaac is a father, and we heard a lot about Yaakov, but here's about Esav, who didn't marry the two sisters. Everyone loves one who's similar to himself. There's not an attraction of opposites. You know, the blind, the blind recluse needs the... It, it's not just an attraction of opposites, where the blind recluse, which is Isaac, needs the lusty outdoors ace of energy to nourish some inner hunger. Rather, what Isaac loves in ace of is precisely the hunter, the alienated, disintegra disintegrated consciousness of one whom all the noble principles, uh, privileges, and promises of life have dissolved in blood. Isaac recognizes the fury evoked by animal life, the desire to extirpate what has no proper existence in his own case, existential helplessness led to withdrawal, to a rigid respect for the priorities and structures of the given world. Now, what does Isaac represent? It says, Isaac represents on the left side the Gvura. So we said Vav, the seven emotive, the six emotives. I might have said seven. It's supposed to be six. We have Chesed, Gvura, Teferet. And we have Netzach, Hod, and Pelvis, Yesod. So, in other words, right leg Netzach, left leg Hod, right arm Chesed, left arm Gvura. Gvura is represented by Isaac, and Yaakov is represented by Teferet. And the right arm, Chesed, is represented by Avraham. So there's a lot of balance here, the three patriarchs giving us. Um, and therefore, it couldn't go to Esav, it had to go to Yaakov, who's in the middle. Anyway, the Kedusha Slavi says, every Tzadik has his own individual style while serving his creator. Avraham, you know, bordering on white, Yitzhak bordering on green, Yaakov bordering on red. Moshe and Aaron had colors unique to them. And the Tzadik wears a garment tailored to, I think it's opposite, I think Yitzhak was bordering on... Um, on red and Yaakov is bordering on green because we say green is like the uh, the Teferit. And then we learn Moshe is the right leg, you know, Aaron's the left leg. Anyway, there's plenty of others that are compared. Yosef might be the pelvis. King David is the feet. Anyway, a tzaddik wears a garment tailored to his specific measurements. When these tzaddikim um, are at the Ein Sof, in other words, the endlessness, they then divest themselves of these garments that are serving because they become one with the Creator. This is uh, from Rabbi Levi Yitzhak of And as mentioned um, earlier, Rabbi Dr. Shei Held, who says Yehuda, Yehudi, means I'll praise, courage, achievement, gratitude, even during heartbreak. And this comes from Leah. Um, you know, that's the first time it says that anyone was, was uh, grateful. Specifically grateful was Leah. And now I have a reason to be grateful. Yehud, Yehuda. And then we learn from, um, one more thing I learned from the Kabbalah Center. You know, it says in Proverbs 15, 19, written by, it's called Mishle. It's written by King Solomon, Shlomo. The way of the lazy is a hedge of thorns and the way of the upright is an even path. We cannot be free of thoughts or desires, even for a moment. So out of love, we can remove the evil attribute in actions and thoughts and in desires out of love for the creator. And the last thing I'll share here today is about, um, um, more that what Aviva Zornberg shared about Isaac and Esav. So to Isaac, the spectacle of Esav's despair turned to destructiveness suge suggests a passion for truth, an intolerance for palliatives, a kind of tortured authenticity. And to Isaac, Esav is the, an is the analytical mind, obsessed with the reality of ex unreality of existence. A figure of his melancholy, Esav appeals to his father's heart. This is a son who deeply needs blessing from a father who, despite all external differences, invest the invites and into it, the rhythm of his despair, the paradoxical similarity of Isaac and Esav is indicative, is indicated by the notation of the field. Isaac's first encounter with Rebecca, he was meditating in the field, in the field towards evening. So Isaac started out in the field also, and that's where Esav found this place in the field. So um, we understand, you know, that's why Isaac wanted to give the blessings to Esav. However, um, Yaakov got the blessings. And... That's what started, and his name got changed to Yisrael when he had to overcome that darkness that they say the, the angel of Esau, the one that um, gave him um, 
the sense that Yaakov, that Yitzchak wanted to bless in him. So Yaakov had to encounter that strength. And after that, his name got changed to Israel. Yisrael. And that's where we got the children of Israel, the land of Israel, um, as was promised by God to Abraham's descendants. Wish you well. Have a good night. Bye.